7, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 1, 0. La mulți ani! La mulți ani, rămân! Bine ați venit în Europa! Ich wünsche Ihnen ein glückliches neues Jahr. I would like to greet the Hungarian community in Romania. I'm Ursula Plasnik, the Austrian foreign minister, and I would like to say Grüß Gott in the European Union. I would like to congratulate you. You have done a tremendous job. You have done a tremendous comeback into the European family. On January the 1st, 2007, Romania joined the European Union. After 50 years of communism and repression and a tough 15-year transition to democracy, the EU represented a new challenge. At 5.30 every morning, company buses travel 45 kilometers from the village of Tomac to Timisoara. We got to know each other on the bus as we traveled to work. He started to work here, and after a month we went together to the disco. We got to know each other better, and then decided to stay together. Timisoara is famous in Romania, even in Europe, as a multicultural and multi-religious community. In 1716, Prince Eugene of Savoy captured the town from the Ottoman Turks. In addition to the native Romanian and Serb inhabitants, Hungarians and others from all parts of the Habsburg Empire came as well. This multiculturalism means that we also have German, Hungarian and Serbian schools. There is something special known as the magic of Timisoara, which stands for peaceful coexistence, tolerance and mutual respect. As a businessman, I would say that the most important factor was the airport. The next, that we are located very close to the border and the Hungarian highway network. In addition, we have this closeness to German culture, to Austro-Hungarian culture. There are many minorities, which helped us a lot. I know that because, while I am Romanian myself, I had the luck to grow up among Germans, the Banat Swabians. In contrast to many neighboring countries here in Timisoara, the ethnic groups live peacefully together. Some 85% of the inhabitants are Romanian, the remainder Hungarian, German and Serb. Joining the EU was a step into a new era for all of them. Now there are two answers, the honest one and the official one. As a Romanian, I'd say that Romania was not admitted to the EU too early. Personally, it has been far too early. I'm sure that the EU profited as well from the low cost of labor here so that Western companies can remain competitive. Perhaps that is also a reason we came into the EU so early. However, I think we were not big enough to destabilize the EU and I believe we were just absorbed by the EU. Show 
Imagine Bulgaria and Romania without a European perspective. How would things have developed in the Balkans? These two countries stabilized the Balkans. For sure. I don't know if this would have been possible without a European perspective. There is also the question, was it too early or not? It was possible. Of course, there are also problems. But we are coping with them. At the moment, almost half of our workers come from outlying areas. That means from up to a radius of 60 kilometers. The unemployment rate here is below 1.5 percent. In Timisoara, we employ 2,000 workers out of a total of 18,000 in the whole of Romania. We are now one of the largest employers in Romania. In Timisoara, we build the wire harnesses, the electrical systems for two BMW models, the 1 Series and 3 Series. Well, I have plenty of wishes. I'd like to build a house, buy a better car and lead a happy life. We have five children and they're all at school. We work for the children so they can have a better future and a better education. Full employment makes it possible for commuters to stay in their villages. After the collapse of communism, agriculture had to be restructured as well. New, larger, competitive businesses emerged. Yes, it's an adventure and a risk, but I was always convinced that if you really want something, you can accomplish it. We received a grant of 150,000 euros from the EU. We had planned an investment of 300,000 euros, but as a result of the rising cost of building materials, we've ended up spending 400,000. Besides investment support, there are also direct payments depending on farm size, administered by APIA. A new aerial photo land registry was specially created for the whole of Romania. Anyone farming more than one hectare may apply for support. Most of the money comes from the EU. It's a good feeling because we as an agency hand out money, whereas many institutions constantly ask for money. The farmers' claims are checked by APIA, which in turn is controlled by the EU. We have 120 employees whose job it is to check whether the national control systems comply with the requirements of EU law. Last year alone, we were in Romania four times to check whether the control systems meet the requirements. When you have to make a large monthly repayment, it's hard to sleep at night. But then, if the credit is paid off completely, you have the satisfaction of knowing that you have an investment worth several hundreds of thousands of euros.
The first computers were produced in Timisoara in 1964. The software sector was the first to develop in Timisoara because there was a school for this here. After de Gaulle's visit to Bucharest in 1968, Romania received a credit of 15 billion dollars for development. Ceausescu signed a computer license contract with France. By 1980, there were about 35,000 software engineers. But the regime became more and more dictatorial and economic conditions also worsened. During the communist dictatorship, the three Fs were the worst. Freezing, famine and fear. This was used in a demonic way. A warm welcome to you all at the opening of the 1989 Revolution Memorial Museum, whose president is Anna Blandiana. First, I'd like to thank you all for coming, in particular the political prisoners who were detained at the time in Brazov. And I think of all those who survived the revolution on University Square and have fought for 18 years to realize those ideas for which people died under 50 years of communist dictatorship. This system destroyed the authenticity of the human being. Those are the true results of communism. In Timisoara, there are three state theatres in three different languages. They are the Romanian National Theatre, the Timisoara German State Theatre and the Hungarian Theatre. And all three are housed in the same building as the opera. I think that's unique in Europe. How did I survive it? Thanks to our souls and our ideals, for which all of us were prepared to make sacrifices. This ideal should not be called heroism. It was an act of devotion. The Orthodox Metropolitan Nikolai Corneanu had been recruited by the Securitate as an informant. Almost every month I was visited by the Securitate agents who wanted statements from me about people so that they could arrest them. I always tried to pass on only information that I assumed would not harm anybody. What weighed on my conscience, however, was the fact that I had to remain in contact with the people from the Securitate. Because there were those who said, no, I will have nothing to do with you, and who were then sentenced to imprisonment. Uh, 
The EU and NATO have accepted us, despite the fact that everything was still in the hands of the Securitate. So our entry into the EU, and that of other Eastern European states, in my opinion, had nothing to do with any moral revolution in our countries. It was more about macroeconomic, strategic and geopolitical interests. I will know that initially Italian firms were going there just to have cheaper labor. And it was not something really healthy, just producing, producing shoes that might compete with the Chinese products or, or others. Now they are changing. Now in Timisoara you can see industrial districts uh, uh, taking shape at a higher technological level. So this is becoming Europe at its best. In 18 years the Italian chef Antonio Passarelli has built up a gastronomic empire. Timisoara is a city in which various cultures cook together. It is a cosmopolitan city. It has a lot going for it, which is why I fell in love with it. There is the restaurant in Timisoara, my catering business, through which we supply many businesses and in Bucharest, my cooking course where I teach. There's Consulting, the association of Romanian chefs, whose vice president I am, and Romanian television, where I have my program. I have to say something. Here today, it's like it was in Italy in the 60s and 70s, when we had our economic boom. At that time, everything functioned the same way as it does here now, with bribes, with corruption. Let me build, then I'll make this for you and that for you. Palaces were built and people made a lot of money and so on and so forth. Romania applied for membership on the 22nd of June 1995. They have made enormous progress, and this enormous progress only happened because they had this perspective of EU membership. If that had not been the case, then the whole Balkans wouldn't be as far as it is. <laughs> Commercial buildings and industrial estates have developed around Timisoara, and not just since 2007. Adetim is a public institution founded in 1995 by the district of Timis to deal with the problems of economic development in the Timisoara region. The fish died and the river was dead. Put simply, we were effectively forced to build a new water treatment plant because Romanian legislation had been harmonized with European legislation. I'm one of 35 Euro parliamentarians representing Romania in the EU Parliament. My concern is the national interests of the Romanian people. And my ideal is that Europe, learns that Romania is no longer a second-class country. As regards water supply, Timisoara is the most neglected town in the country. The water that the inhabitants of Timisoara drink comes from the Bega, an absolutely filthy river whose water isn't properly treated. The treatment plant is very old, makeshift and not even remotely acceptable. rudimentar, empiric, 
The cohesion principle is exactly about this, that the regions where the GDP per head is 30% below the EU average are selected and receive financial assistance. Europe as a solidarity project. I went fishing with my father from when I was about 10 years old because my father had this same hobby. He took me with him because he maintained that I was his son. He died on the 17th of February this year. My mother now lives with me until she is not scared to live alone anymore. Open letter about my brother. Dear Mr. Gorbachev. I'd be lying to say that I had a clear picture of my desires before my eyes. I was never able to imagine a society after the revolution. The Romanian revolution began with demonstrations in Timișoara. The people here were the first to take to the streets and risk their lives for a better future. The target man, one monument in memory of people who died in 700 square of Timișoara. Mm -hmm. I was a target too, they shoot me in my leg. The, open the Opera Square in Timișoara. Airborne troops landed here today and entrenched themselves. The situation is dangerous because Ceausescu's elite troops are very well equipped. This monument is named the winner. By my opinion, it's a victim. His soul is broken, symbolize his death. După 16 at 16.40 they began shooting. One man just beside me was shot. And as I bent down to look after him, I was also shot, fracturing my thigh. In one hospital, the Securitate shot dead a doctor. I want to tell you that the revolution was successful. We got rid of communism, but not of communists and not of the Securitate. At the end of my final year of study, the people from the Securitate came. We spoke and they suggested I join the service of the Securitate. In 1982, I was transferred to Timișoara, where I was acting head of department. After that, I was promoted to deputy head in Timișoara, a position I held until 1989. 153 dead in Timișoara. Margareta Claudia, age 12, dead. Alin, age 7, shot dead. Veregia Adrian, 23-year-old worker, father of a one-year-old child, dead. This is the cemetery of revolution of 1989. Everything is made in black and white stone. Black, white, black, white. Night, day, dead, life. Black, white, black, white. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Then came the day the Ceausescu's were executed. It was Christmas, and for the first time everything seemed very eerie. The fact that a murder happens at Christmas, even if it's a criminal being brought to justice, didn't seem right. So everything started suddenly to become suspect. Ceausescu was declared the only culprit, but the old system was completely preserved. History has many examples of patricide. The father must be removed, the Communist Party has disappeared, but the Secret Service Securitate benefited. Because it possessed all the important information, it could privatize the economy and therefore earn a lot of money. There were scandals about the privatization of public property and about personal gain, but until today no one has been prosecuted. The people from Timisoara like to call their city Little Vienna, but as far as I can see, there is a lot that needs to be renovated. When we met last time concerning the house, we spoke about the repairs to the roof and the facade, you remember? The problem is that houses under protection are often inhabited by former tenants of the Romanian state, and they don't have the resources to renovate them in a way that respects the standards of conservation. The German Association for Technical Cooperation, or GTZ, finances a group of architects here who deal with the restoration of old buildings. Most of you know what this is about. You know that a request for counselling was made to us and that, together with our architects, we have compiled documentation for this building. Although loans are subsidised, these building projects usually remain unaffordable for the inhabitants. That is so unreal for us. We have already received, but it is such a large sum that our pensions are not enough. We have a pension of 200 euros, and many thousand euros are the costs for one apartment. Living costs are already at European levels. A litre of milk costs about 1 euro 20. With these 500 lie per month, that's almost nothing. It's nothing. It's too little. Immediately after the revolution, Petru Ilyeshu founded a charitable organization, Timishara 89. What you see here is just the tip of the iceberg. I see it as an obligation of everyone to support one's fellow men. We are less than 10% of the total population. The church itself is a vanishing minority. We don't have enough strength to pull everyone from the dirt. There are no moral role models. The divide, which is increasingly opening between the social classes, is simply not normal anymore. The revolution took place at the end of December 1989. I remained here in Romania for another month, as I participated at a tournament in Bulgaria. Then I returned and immediately emigrated, by train. 
I got out of the train in Vienna's West Station, and in front of the railway station I met my trainer, completely by accident. He literally picked me up from the street, so I didn't have to live in the Treiskirchen refugee camp. I had to sort all my papers in Treiskirchen, but thank God I didn't have to live there. Florentine Banner was spared the experience of Treiskirchen, a then notorious refugee camp close to Vienna. Back in Romania, he became very successful as an entrepreneur. Out of passion for badminton, he built a sports center. He is training a young talent and hosting an annual international tournament. I drove a taxi in Vienna for almost three years. I made all business plans and calculations in the taxi. When I was waiting for customers, I planned on my knees and dreamed that something would come of it. And something came of it. It's all in motion. It's an awakening, a historic economic period of our country. Everything is in movement now. We're really beginning to become a market economy. When I saw that there was the possibility of participating in an auction in 1994, I bought the company and everything began. I started with a weaving mill and we have manufactured clothing accessories. It's more difficult for a woman, and it's more difficult in Romania because there is still this mentality here which doesn't change, however hard we try, that the woman's place is not in politics or the business world, but at home. We are visiting Timisoara as part of a delegation from Nottingham City in the UK. There's a great deal of opportunity here to, for new know-how. I understand the um, IT sector is growing in significance here and that's something that the other member states can learn and benefit from at the same time. Sionic was founded by a German and a Romanian and is today managed as a Romanian company. Sionic is a service enterprise. We're involved in the software sector, development, data acquisition, all the way up to product development. In the last four years, this enterprise has very clearly developed in the direction of the healthcare sector. Personally, I can only say that I'm often ashamed to be Romanian when I'm asked about it in Brussels. We can't explain these failures of the National Health Service to the EU. But the main guilt lies with the Ministry of Health, which simply drags its feet. This is medical software designed for doctors' practices. It's the first online platform developed in Romania for family doctors. There is also a complete medication library. You can order the precise prescription here. And the best thing is that you can run everything on the internet. So we're really a big step ahead. Of course, in the first place, uh, it has been uh, the will and uh, wish of uh, the people of Timisoara, the citizens of uh, Timisoara. They are very entrepreneurial and uh, they, are, uh, they have a relatively good level of uh, education. This has created preconditions uh, for economic uh, success. Uh, hence, uh, it is a combination of uh, internal dynamics uh, and uh, a sound uh, external European framework. There's a Romanian saying, no miracle lasts longer than three days.
We are in Timișoara for the anniversary of the Timișoara Proclamation. The famous Article 8 of Timișoara requires that in a democracy, all those responsible for the atrocities under the communist regime, so all securitate staff and the leaders of the communist party, are not allowed to hold public office. The Memorial Museum of the Revolution was also founded in order to push the police investigations against those responsible for the shootings. Two generals were sentenced, Stankulescu and Chitak. But after the revolution, one became Minister of the Interior and the other Minister of Defence. In 1990, Ion Iliescu became the first president. He used force to quell protests. Six died. He got Anna Blandiana into his cabinet as a fig leaf. I'm a writer, a poet. And suddenly, Jan Iliescu came to me and said, you haven't got the right to say no. We need someone popular. She was to serve as a mask for the true power structures. A short time later, I resigned from the government. For the time being, the old security networks remained in power. I seized the first opportunity after the revolution, which was a newspaper interview, to talk about the incidents which had happened to me regarding the Securitate. I feel relieved. In some way it was liberating, freed from guilt. To put it another way, my conscience was clean again. Today there are former members of the Secret Service and party members in Timișoara who have important positions and are multimillionaires. I told all the companies I've worked for that I was a former member of the Securitate, but no one was interested. People are no longer interested in ethical values. They want to know how they're going to feed their children tomorrow. They are no longer interested whether someone has a communist past. For example, look at Mr. Radu Tinu. Now he's director of Asirom, a company whose owner was previously a Securitate general. There are still competent people, I'll give you an example. The Alcatel Company. Alcatel is a company built up by students and excellent professors from the Technical University. Mr. Bedros is today responsible for all of Central Europe, and if I'm not wrong, Asia as well. The lecturers were paid very badly, they had very low wages and that led to instability. We have invested half a million euros in the Polytechnic Institute, equipped four workrooms with fixed and mobile IT equipment. The courses are free of charge and we pay our professors. We've doubled their salaries and the school has stabilized. A public-private partnership between the universities and companies is the only solution for the future. Still, however, there is the problem of politically suspect university professors from the period before 1989. Professor Marcel Torchia is not prepared to accept this. GRU was founded approximately a year ago.
GRU înseamnă... GRU means... Enough. A group of university professors is fighting for an unambiguously democratic faculty. We've discussed the principles, have asked our colleagues to clarify their past and come to terms with it. We wanted to see if there was any collaboration between them and the Securitate or the politicians. There are already some initial successes. Mr. Ioan Mihai is now no longer rector of the university. However, lacking courage to stand up for one's beliefs is still a problem among the teaching staff. It's not important who the rector is, but who has the courage to fight for his rights. A joint initiative of the university and the municipality are the business incubators, incubators for tiny IT companies which provide subsidized infrastructure. You could say I'm the manager and these are my employees, but I'd rather say they're my colleagues as we have an atmosphere like a student club here. You work 16 or 18 hours a day. Last night I worked until 2.30, but I don't find it a strain. The effort is paying off. The young entrepreneurs have customers from all over the world. This is an outsourcing project for customers from the U.S. The idea of the project is relatively new. It makes it possible for employees of companies to give their opinions, so that if you wanted to work there, you could search and see what the employees think about their company. We're a call center. Well, it's 90% of what we do, our mainstay. Beyond that, we also have data processing and programming services. At the moment, we employ about 320 workers and have customers in 25 countries worldwide, from America, Canada, over the whole of Europe to Japan. In the data collection section, handwritten transactions are digitized. Everything which arrives in any given hour has to be processed in the same hour. If it comes today, it must be returned today. If we don't manage to process the data fields within five minutes, they will be automatically returned to Germany for security reasons. I'm convinced that IT will secure our future. It's not just the multinational companies that are important, but also the small and medium-sized businesses. They develop and will compensate for job losses in case a large business will leave. In some industries, it's not the know-how, but the low pay that determines location. It's not enough. If we compare our salaries with a worker in Germany, we earn 200 euros. How much does a worker in Germany earn? In October this year, I got a loan, 2,000 euros, over 10 years. That's 300 euros a year. I bought new furniture, a computer for the children. We also have an internet connection, nothing special. 
But the children need new clothes. All the time it's brands, brands, brands. Adidas, Nike. But how can I get all this? It was never as bad as this. We are like slaves. It's not possible with these wages. You can't feed a family. There was a strike in Pitesht, right next to our site by Dacia Renault. The reason? It's always pay. Romanians perhaps had high expectations that EU accession would mean their lifestyles would rapidly resemble the West. And, therefore, the population had high expectations. You have to say clearly that the EU has no direct responsibility when it comes to the question of wages. This is the responsibility of the member states. And above all, of course, a question for social partners in business or society. The strikes were successful. Wages rose by up to 30%. That was also a reason why we recently decided to look for a site in Serbia. We're shifting a part of our production from Timisoara to Serbia. Serbian colleagues have been training here for a month already. They've begun their initial training in Timisoara so that we can use them when production starts in Serbia in a few weeks. It's a sick society, traumatized by the speed with which changes have occurred. The problem affecting practically everyone is corruption in the health service. Because the Romanian public knows about medical salaries, people offer doctors a certain, let's say, compensation, money or gifts for their services. What is really bad, however, is if the doctor makes his services to patients dependent on these gifts. People don't understand that the healthcare system must be improved. The healthcare system is the most corrupt sector in Romania. What an individual can do about this corruption is shown by Dr. Zandesk. When we began here, working conditions were extremely bad. It was a ward where the sick just fought between life and death. And we had no means to help them, so we could only watch them dying. Dr. Sanders has changed the system in his department completely. These people who come to us, doctors with money now to thank us, we tell them openly that they should not give it to us but donate it to the department. The project is very comprehensive. 
Today, the intensive care unit is the most advanced in the hospital. The project focuses on the one hand, on the renovation of rooms, equipment and the bathroom facilities, and on the other hand, on the acquisition of new medical instruments. I've decided to live in Timisoara myself, because the revolution for all of Romania started in Timisoara. There is something like the magic of Timisoara which somehow lives on, a certain spirit of the revolution, and we're still living through an interesting period of radical change, which happens all over the country. People are finally waking up. style.